Hi, I'm Lucy, your narrator. Thanks for joining me for another video, and if this is your first time here, a very warm welcome to you. Before we get started, please kindly take a moment right now and click that subscribe button and notification bell so you can be alerted of every time I upload a new video. And also, please watch this video to the end and see the preview trailer and some behind-the-scenes photos. The Grapes of Wrath is a drama movie. It was directed by John Ford and it won two Oscars. It was released in the USA in 1940 and it stars Henry Fonda, Jane Darwell, and John Carradine. And some of their co-stars were Charlie Grapewin, Doris Bowden, Russell Simpson, O.Z. Whitehead, John Quillan, Eddie Quion, Zephy Tilbury, Frank Zully, Frank Darian, Daryl Hickman, Shirley Mills, Roger M. Half, Grant Richel, and John Arledge. The movie is about an Oklahoma family dir driven off their farm by the poverty and hopelessness of the Dust Bowl. They join the westward migration to California, suffering the misfortunes of the homeless in the Great Depression. And now for some behind the scenes trivia and tidbits. The banks and the large farming corporations that controlled most California farms were not keen on the original novel. It was banned in some states and in several counties in California, and the book was not carried in the municipal library of author John Steinbeck's hometown of Salinas, California until the 1990s, and were even less thrilled that a film was being made of it. The Associated Farmers of California called for a boycott of all 20th Century Fox films, and Steinbeck himself received death threats. Prior to filming, producer Daryl F. Zanuck sent undercover investigators out to the migrant camps to see if John Steinbeck had been exaggerating about the squalor and unfair treatment meted out there. He was horrified to discover that, if anything, Steinbeck had actually downplayed what went on in those camps. And the pro-union stance of the film led to both John Steinbeck and John Ford being investigated by Congress during the McCarthy Red Scare era for alleged pro-communist leanings. John Ford banned all makeup and perfume from the set on the grounds because it was not in keeping with the tone of the picture. And John Ford treated Doris Bonin, who plays Russa Hearn, quite badly. It may have been because she was the girlfriend of screenwriter Nunnally Johnson and was given the part by Daryl F. Zanuck. Or it may be simply have been one of Ford's frequent inexplicable dislikes, but he hounded the young actress on every point, from coming on the set with her hair improperly done to taking time to have her hair fixed. Shortly before filming the scene of the dance at the government camp, Jane Darwell expressed her nervousness to Bowden about being such a fat old lady and I have to dance and say lines at the same time. When Darwell did the entire take perfectly, Bowden spontaneously broke into applause, launching a tirade from Ford that made her run from the set crying. The next shooting day, Ford rather awkwardly cheered her up with a little Bowdy humor and the two got on well after that. Although she later said, I was glad I never had to work with him again. Yet Bowden in later life also expressed the duality of feelings actors often had for the difficult director when she related a story about how he painstakingly talked her through a very emotional moment that she ended up nailing in a single take. He was a superb director, she said. I never saw another director work in a way that was as skilled. And John Ford unmercifully chewed out Frank Darian, who played Uncle John, for over-emoting in the scene where Ma is preparing a simple stew 
for the family in front of a crowd of starving children in the migrant camp. By the time Ford had finished his tirade, Darian was completely drained, which proved to be exactly the take that Ford wanted for the scene. And John Ford's chief source of irritation was his inability to embarrass or upset John Carradine. According to Doris Bowden, Carradine had a huge ego, considered himself a great actor, and was impervious to whatever Ford threw at him. Although their antagonism often produced perfect moments of performance and character. And although John Carradine hated John Ford's bullying style of direction, he nevertheless made 11 films with him over a period of 28 years. Ford was particularly keen on Carradine's unusual look. And producer Daryl F. Zanuck knew that Henry Fonda was desperate for the part of Tom Joad. So he let it be known that he was going to offer the part to Tyrone Power. Fonda pleaded with Zanuck for the part. And in order to get it, Zanuck talked to him into signing an eight-year picture deal with 20th Century Fox. And unusual for John Ford, he allowed Daryl F. Zanuck to supervise the editing. Indeed, Zanuck remains one of the very few producers to actually draw praise from the normally rather critical director. And Henry Fonda, still struggling to become a big Hollywood star, tried to avoid being a contract player for 20th Century Fox because he wanted the ability to independently choose his own projects. An increasing number of stars at that time were trying to gain such independence. But when the much coveted part of Tom Joad was offered to him, Fonda hesitantly gave in and signed a contract to work with the studio for seven years because he knew it would be the role of a lifetime. And John Steinbeck was particularly enamored with the performance of Henry Fonda as Tom Joad, feeling that he perfectly encapsulated everything he wanted to convey with his character. The two became good friends, and indeed Fonda did a reading at Steinbeck's funeral. And according to Henry Fonda, John Ford preferred only one take and little or no rehearsal to catch the most spontaneous moment. For the key climatic final scene between Tom and Ma, Ford didn't even watch the rehearsal. When the time came to shoot, Ford led Fonda and Jane Darwell through the silent action of the scene, preventing them from starting their lines until the two actors were completely in the moment. It was done in a single take and Fonda said on screen it was brilliant. And Henry Fonda kept the hat he wore in the movie for the rest of his life. And before he passed away in 1982, he gave it to his old friend Jane Withers. Apparently, he and Withers, when she was an eight-year-old girl and he a young man, did a play together before Fonda made movies. Fonda was so nervous to go on stage that little Jane took his hand, said a little prayer to ease his nerves, and the two of them became good friends for life. And the bowl Grandma eats from just after Grace early in the film is a fine example of 1930s ring-striped stoneware, now a sought-after collector's item. And archived files indicate the area around Needles was used as a riverbank in the film. 
Canejo Ranch stood in for the Keeney Ranch, and the Irvine Ranch in Tustin provided backdrops for a montage sequence with Lasky Mesa in the San Fernando Valley near Chatsworth was used for the Joad Farm and for Muley's Farm. The real-life government-run Arvin Federal Government Camp near Bakersfield, California was also used for some shots of the fictional government camp in the movie. The camp post office was used as the manager's office in the film. And while filming the Joad's car traveling down the highway, John Ford wanted to add a shot showing the large number of caravans heading west. So the film's business manager stopped actual cars making the trek and paid the drivers $5 to escort the Joad's jalopy for the cameras. And Chris Christopherson wrote a song called Here Comes That Rainbow Again. And it was inspired by a scene in this movie. Sweeping across the country comes one of the great literary achievements of our time. A human revealing soul stirring story. You're on the waiting list. We've never had such a demand for a book. Do you have a copy of Grapes of Wrath? Sorry, we're all sold out. Yes, the Grapes of Wrath. Well, send me as many copies as you can. I can't supply the demand. The grapes of wrath. 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 As sales skyrocket, the grapes of wrath becomes the book of the nation. Everyone, everywhere, joins in the discussion of its vital problem. Due to this unprecedented popularity, producers vie for the motion picture rights. And finally, 20th Century Fox announces the purchase of the book and plans for its immediate production. A storm of discussion arouses the nation. Speculation and rumor are rife to the effect that no producer will venture to film this great dramatic masterpiece of human heart. Daryl F. Zanuck, production head of 20th Century Fox Studios, emphatically announces that the grapes of wrath will be made. All of the resources of this vast studio are marshaled for the production. John Ford, Academy Award winner, is given the directorial assignment. The cast is carefully chosen to make John Steinbeck's unforgettable characters come to life. Tom Joad is played by Henry Fonda. Maud Joad is played by Jane Darwell. Casey is played by John Carradine. Grandpa is played by Charlie Grapewind. Rosa Sharon is played by Doris Bowden. Maud Joad is played by Russell Simpson. Al is played by O.Z. White. of Wrath is ready for the screen as the motion picture captures all the drama, suspense, action, tears and laughter of the story that stirred a nation. If you like that one, we've got a lot more. Hotter than your morning coffee. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I would greatly appreciate it if you would please kindly give me a like, comment below, share with others, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell to be alerted of every time I upload a new video. Please come back to see the next one. Until then, bye for now, and be blessed.